In this presentation, we will enter and adjust an entry related to accrued interest within QuickBooks Online. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars file. In order to see what our objective is, we're going to go to the reports on the left side. Within the reports, we're going to select our favorite report, that being the balance sheet. Within the balance sheet, we're going to scroll up top and change those dates from 010119 to 022819 January through February, the end of February, that being our cutoff date, and run that report. We're going to scroll down to the loans. If we scroll down to the loans payable accounts, we see that we had broken out the current and long-term portion in prior presentations. When considering the long-term loan we had, we made installment payments, making payments each month on that loan. With the regard to the current loan, however, we haven't looked at the format or the structure of that current loan. That's what we'll do now. This loan for the $5,000, we are going to say is not in installments. We're not making monthly payments, but rather we're going to be setting up and making the payment and interest at the end of the loan. This is another common way that loans could be structured. And when it's structured in that way, that would mean that here's the principal portion we're not making any interest payments, although we have the loan outstanding. And as that would be like us having an apartment or as some kind of office building, working in the office building without paying the rent and then paying the rent at some future date, if we're going to pay the rent six months later. It's accumulating. We've already used it as we, as we are using the office building. We will have to pay the rent at some point in the future, and we want to record that as we do it. So to see that, that accumulation, let's go back to our amortization tables, our worksheets, and see what this type of loan would look like. We saw the prior type of loan. This is the prior kind of standard type of loan that we think about with, with any kind of car payments typically or with uh, mortgage payments or something like that where we have the loan balance and we pay these installments typically monthly, breaking out the interest and principal portion, that being the confusing part. In some ways, it would be easier, uh, just for the calculation purposes, if we didn't pay back anything until the end. It would be less complex, but less usual, and therefore something that might be uh, foreign to us <laughs> in that case. So in this case, we're going to say we have a $5,000 loan, 6% interest, that's the rate, and we're going to pay back the loan and the principal at the end of the loan. And note that any, a loan can be set up any way you want. So whatever the terms of the loan, when you're going to pay interest and whatnot, those can be set up in the terms of the loan. This would be another typical way we might see a loan where we pay interest in principal at the end of the loan. How would we set that up? Well, what would happen as time passes in terms of the adjusting entry when the interest accumulates but we have not yet paid it? Well, first let's do a kind of a future value calculation. we got to think, well... If that's the case, how much am I going to owe at the end of six months? That's probably the first question we would have. Excel can help us with a future value formula. So to do that, uh, let's, let's go to the formula tabs up top and we'll go to the, to the insert function. And we'll say, okay, if, you, if you're going to loan me $5,000 at 6% and uh, six months later I've got to pay it back, then what's the future value? What's, how much am I going to owe back in the future? So we'll go to the FV, which is the future value. So returns future value of investment. That's the one we want. I'm going to say OK. Then we'll just go through the data input here. We're going to say the rate is going to be 6%. I'm going to take that 6%. Here's the confusing part, however. 6% means per year. That's the convention when we talk about percents, percents, unless we state otherwise. We want per month. So I'm going to take that and divide it by 12. So that amount divided by 12. The, the number of payments, notice it gives it down here, a little description, is the number of payment periods in the investment. So it's going to be six months, six months of payments. So that's the number of periods. They're monthly periods, note, not yearly periods, monthly periods. That's why we need the interest rate to be a monthly interest rate. And then the payment amount, and this is the tricky part, we don't have any payments. That's zero. We're not making payments. We're just talking about the original balance here. So the original balance with no payments which means we're going to use this PV, which isn't required if we're using this present value or this future value formula in other contexts. Here it will be. 
we're going to say the present value is now that 5,000. And, and this will give us a number here. And notice it's calculating it for us down here for us. If we then say, okay, there we have it. So we're going to say, okay, that's the future value. I'm going to change this to a positive number by double clicking on it, flipping the sign. I'm just going to put a negative in front of the F and say, hey, I want you to multiply that by negative one or take the value, flip the sign just to see a positive number. So if you, if you don't know how to do that or, or don't want to know how to do that, that's okay. But this is basically what we first want to know when we have a loan. How much am I going to have to pay back? And that also tells us that the difference between those two numbers is interest. That's what we're going to pay over and above the original 5000 that we uh, borrowed, which of course will be the interest. So what we need to know now though is that interest broken out by period, by month because that's what we need to accrue. That's basically the rent on the 5,000 per month, which is what we need now for the adjusting entry. To do that, we can do a similar kind of schedule we did in the prior presentation. We could say the payments are always zero. Remember, that's, that's that zero, so the payments are nothing. The interest is gonna be accumulating upward. So the interest is gonna be the 5,000. This is the rent that we're paying. The rent is the principal amount times the rate six percent that would be for a year divided by 12. let's see that in a calculator real quick so we can see it more clearly five thousand times point times point oh six three hundred would be for a year but then we're dividing it by 12 25 per month so that means the increase in principal is going to be the same amount the principal is going up because we we made no payment and the reason i'm using these these uh, labels is because it kind of matches the labels we had in our, our loan amortization schedule. So you can have kind of a similar setup of labels. And then the principal is going to go up. It was 5,000 before. Now it's 5,025. Now, if we, if we continue this process, then of course the payment once again is zero. The interest now is going to be the new principal, 525, times the interest divided by 12. For monthly it's another 25 but it's not quite the same and notice that they're small numbers so we can't see it as well but if i go to the home tab and increase the interest you'll see it's a slightly different so the interest is changing because the principal's changing as we saw in the prior loan so the the principal is going to go up by that we're going to say now the principal plus the new uh, added principal is going up it's not going down as we saw in the other loan Remember here, we made a payment that's greater than the principal, bringing the principal balance down each time. In this case, we're not making any payment. <laughs> the payment is zero and the principal is, and the interest is going up. So the amount we owe the principal, we can say principal and interest is going up. And so we might more properly call this principal and interest. But in essence, it's obviously gonna be increasing until we make the payment at the end. So we do, if we keep doing this, we're going to say this number times the 6% divided by 12. And then we're going to say this is the same number. Principal is now this plus this. And again, it probably makes more sense if we see the pennies. I'll add the pennies. So there we have it. So it's, you can see the difference. It's a small number, so the difference is not as significant. We're going to do it again. This times this divided by 12, same number here, and then it's the prior plus the principal. Now, if we had a lot of, of stuff, we can copy this down if we had a lot of uh, time periods. So we could try to highlight this and copy it down. Note what happens, this should be zero. So I'm gonna say that this equals zero. And then the interest is not doing what we wanted because it brought this cell down. So what I want is this cell V4 to be the same. So I'm gonna adjust that. So let's delete this and say, how can I fix that? Well, if I double click on this, this cell shouldn't be going down. That's cell V4. So I'm gonna put my cell in V4 and select F4 on the keyboard, or just put a dollar sign between, before the V and the four. That's an absolute reference telling Excel, do not bring that cell down uh, in a relative way when we copy it. And then if we do that and we do this again and bring this down, it should work, although it's doing that again. And that looks good. So now I can bring it down to the end. So we'll bring it down. And this number then should match this number. So it's, it's rounding, of course, that it's off by.
So there we have it. So that's the information we have. Bottom line is we're accruing interest and we're just gonna accrue this interest on this first payment. We're gonna say it's been a month. And so we've accrued $25. It's insignificant, so this journal entry is pretty small, of course, but it can be significant over time. We're gonna say, hey, we've got rent, basically interest that we owe on this loan that's accumulating upwards. We should be recording that and recognizing that on the balance sheet as we go. That's what we'll do now. So we're gonna go back to our uh, information here and we're gonna set it up in another account. We're gonna call it an accrued interest. So we're not gonna put it into the, into the loan account. We're gonna break it out into an account called accrued interest. We can also call it interest payable, which we'll do here. So I'm gonna go back to the report and we'll scroll back down. So now we have the loan payable. We've got to increase it in a way, but we're not going to increase it directly here. We're going to increase it to another current liability account that we're going to call, you can call it accrued interest. We're going to call it interest payable. And we're going to increase that by 25. The other side is going to go to interest expense, like interest rent, like rent on the, on the money. Uh, now we can't, we, to do this, we could use journal entries, but we're going to ha have to add the interest payable account. We could use registers too, which is what we'll do, but we can't use the, the income statement account of interest expense because it doesn't have a register. So what we'll have to do if we want to use the registers is what we will do. We'll add an interest payable account and then we'll use the register for it to enter this journal entry. So we're going to go to the reports on the left side. Uh, I'm sorry, we're going to go to accounting on the left side. We're going to go to the chart of accounts and then we're going to add an account up top. I'm going to say I want a new account. The new account is going to be an other current uh, liability type, other current liability type of account. And it's going to be accrued interest. The detail type we'll keep as other current liability as well. And then the name that we're going to add to it is going to be, uh, let's say interest payable instead. Interest payable. I feel, I feel like a payable makes more sense to most people. You see payable. That basically means liability. It's something you owe in the future. We're going to pay it in the future. So I tend to go with that terminology. So we'll go with the interest payable, save and close. Now we're going to find that account and we're going to go to the register for it. So we'll scroll down. We're in order by type. So we're in assets and then we're in liabilities. It's a current asset. So interest payable, there it is. That's the one we want. Let's see, I just lost it. Interest payable. <laughs> That's the one we want. So we're going to say view the register. Here is our register. We're going to make a journal entry now. So we'll enter a journal entry. As of 022819, the end of February, that's going to be our cutoff date. We're going to say the memo. It's going to be a adjusting AJE entry. It's an adjusting entry. And this account then is going to be increasing. The liability, the bad thing is going to go up. So the bad thing's going up, the liability's going up by 25. We owe another 25 for kind of rent interest on the money. The other side is going to go to interest expense, which we have incurred but have not yet paid. So this will be an expense. We'll say interest, interest, I can't get the interest, interest paid. It's an expense account. So we'll keep that interest paid. It hasn't been paid. That's not exactly the best name. I wouldn't call it interest paid if it were me, but the, the, the system calls it interest paid. That's what QuickBooks set up when we set up the chart of accounts. In this case, if it's an expense account. Hasn't yet been paid, but it's been incurred on an accrual basis. So we're going to say save. And let's go back to our reports now. So we're going to go to the reports and see what happened. We're going to go to the balance sheet report and change the dates up top once again from 010119 to 022819, the end of February being our cutoff date and run that report. Scrolling down, we're going to see that we have our uh, interest payable. There's the 25. We select that 25. We'll see there's our adjusting entry for the interest payable, increasing that amount. Going back to our report, we've got the 25 and then the 500, 5,000, which is included in here, which of course is our balance now in here it's 5025 including principal and interest that's due as of now so we're going to go back now we'll look at the other side on the profit and loss let's do that by opening a new tab right clicking the tab up top duplicating that tab we're going to pull the left tab to the right so that we have the balance sheet on the left and we're working on the right we're going to open up reports on the left side we're going to go to the profit and loss report now 
and we'll change the dates once again from 02 oh, let's let's make it 010119 to 022819 and run that report and now within this time period we're going to record the interest so here's the uh interest it's up top in the normal expenses interest paid again i don't that probably shouldn't be called it should be just called interest expense or possibly just interest but there it is we're gonna have the 625 it's been incurred because just like if we lived somewhere or if we used a building didn't pay the interest it's still been incurred and we have the interest of the 25 if we select that notice the memo doesn't show up here we'll see our journal entry and we probably just want to copy this name or the description so that it's on both sides of the transaction notice of course it is a journal entry when we go back here uh, and it's that's the form that QuickBooks will use a journal entry so we'll save that close that back out and there's our memo for more accounting information and accounting courses visit our website at accountinginstruction.info